Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks. In this video, I'm gonna show you the best way to tune your samples inside of Logic 10. So if you've been trying to figure out how to tune a kick drum, a snare sample, or any type of melodic one shot, stay tuned, this video is gonna really help you out. All right, so I've previously touched on this topic before about a year or two ago. I, I had a couple videos on how to tune kicks, how to tune snares, but I wanted to come back and kind of do a refresher on it, but really spin it for the Logic users out there. So there are two steps involved to tuning a sample. The first step is determining the pitch and the second is transposing. Sounds simple enough. Finding the pitch isn't always easy. There is no great native tool in Logic to do it. So we're gonna have to use a couple third-party plugins. I'll talk about a free one as well as a paid option. And the second step, which is the transposition side, right? You obviously, once you determine your pitch, you have to transpose up or down to get it to match. It can be a little interesting in Logic. So Logic has these different modes, these different algorithms. They're called flex modes and they will determine how Logic ultimately is going to pitch up or down that sample. And some flex modes work better for certain types of material. So we're going to investigate the different flex modes and, and audition them to see which one works best for tuning, say, a kick or a snare. And the goal of looking at those different flex modes and seeing how they work with different types of samples is simple. Ultimately, you want to be able to get the best possible results, the best audio, the best quality when you're transposing in Logic. So let's dive in and get started. All right, so this demo that we're gonna take a quick listen to, it's from our latest pack, the X keys. I have swapped out the kick and the snare. So these currently are not in tune with the track, but I want you to get a quick feel for what we're gonna be working with while we go through and tune both the kick and the snare in this video. All right, so the first step to tuning any sample is actually knowing and understanding the key that you're working in, right? You, you can't determine the tonic, the root note of any sample if you don't know what key you're in. So the key in, in the song that we're looking at in this video is in the key of B minor, so our root note is a B. So most likely our kick's gonna sit at a B. I would say 99% of the time the kick is going to be on the tonic or the root note, but other samples like snares and percussive elements, they don't have to be on the tonic. They can be on other, other notes within the scale. So if you're a little bit unsure about what notes are in the scale, just do a quick Google search, pull it up, because it might help you out. So if you try to get like a like a tom or some type of percussive hit to sit on top of the mix, you don't have to have it be your tonic, you can have it be another note within the scale. All right, so the first step is to determine the pitch. Now you'd be surprised how many times this has happened to me. I, th I think a sample doesn't have <laughs> the pitch in the file name, and I spend you know a couple minutes figuring out the pitch, and then when I zoom in later, when I'm like making an edit or a fade, I see that it didn't have pitch. So check your sample, like all of our samples, all of our kicks, all of our snares, we put the pitch in the file name, right? So it'll say like kick number whatever, and then it will have the pitch, C, G, F, whatever it might be. Now that eliminates the step of you know having to figure out the pitch, you can move on to the next part of the video, which is going to be transposition. But if you don't know the pitch, we need to find out what it is and there's a couple ways to do it. So let's see how that works. All right, so we're doing, we're going to do a quick check to see if the pitch is in the file name and it is not. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at some of these different options, these different plugins that will help you figure out the pitch of a sample. So first up is the stock tuner inside of Logic. Now, this specific tuner, in my experience, doesn't have a great track record on short kicks and short snares. It'll work well on 808s and kicks with a nice long tonal decay, even snare samples that have a lot of tonality to them and obviously, you know, melodic instruments, but it isn't super accurate on kicks and snares, but let's just see how well it works just to be thorough. So um, I, what, what, what I like to do for this is I like to loop the sample, not a super quick, you know, fast loop, just a loop that lets the sample decay a little bit and just loop it and play it. All right, so it says it's a D. Now I know that's close. Um, it says it was a D at the seven cents uh, sharp. That's not what this actual kick is. Um, I'll, I'll touch on that in a little bit. So it's close, it's not great, but you guys can use it. Now, the next plugin is another tuning plugin and it's completely free, so you have no reason not to download it. It's made by a company called Melda Productions and it's called the M Tuner. Now, this one's really nice because you can fine tune the controls, right? A little bit different than the tuner in Logic where it's just set to 440 and then you're, you're gonna hit play and it's gonna tune. You can have the M Tuner focus in on specific frequencies. So it's really simple though, this is a kick. Low end's important, so let's turn the min down as low as it goes because there's there's a sub element to the kick. And the max, we don't need to go to a thousand hertz because if you really start to think about a, a kick, the prominent frequency that's gonna be making up the actual pitch of it's gonna happen well before a thousand hertz, right? So it's probably gonna happen anywhere between, you know, no more I would say than 300, 
hertz tops and that depends on like the key that you're in so we'll just set this to about 330 and call it good so all you have to do is hit play all right so now it's saying it's a c sharp now that is the actual pitch of this sample um previously I, it's been tuned it's from one of our sample packs so i know it's a c sharp so this one is pretty accurate and it even tells you how many cents it's it's uh, sharp so it's 44 cents sharp above c sharp right and logic's tuner said it was seven cents sharp above d so close both of them are close. the logic tuner is close but this one is better all right so the next plugin we're going to look at is a different type of plugin it's called voxango span and it's going to kind of fit into the world of a spectrum analyzer so let's take a look at that and it is a completely free plugin you do have to enter i believe an email address or create an account to get it but you can go to voxango and download this now it's a really nice spectrum analyzer it does a couple other things but for this tutorial video we're going to be using it mainly for the spectrum analyzing feature so what we can do is we can solo our kick drum and then open this up and there's really one control that you need to be aware of this hold feature so you can see if i move my mouse down into the grid to the actual main part of the window we can see that we have a hertz readout up here at the top left right now it says 327 and just over to the right that says e4 minus 15 cents so we get a note readout as well so this is how we're going to determine the pitch of the sample so if we hit play and then hit hold we can stop the play the playback but we can still see our our waveform right so if I hover over kind of to find a fundamental the general the general rule is going to be hover over the first kind of big rise in audio right the first peak so that looks like it's about right here so we might be at a c or a c sharp two it's kind of in between that we, we're not sure it could be slightly out of tune right so this would be the second second harmonic then we got some different harmonics and white noise above it so i'm thinking this might be a c sharp two i don't it doesn't matter it's two a c sharp or a c okay so what i like to do is i like to confirm those results with another plugin now you could just do it in one plugin so if you got, if any of you guys have FabFilter Pro Q3 or FabFilter Pro Q2, you don't even have to download Span. You can do this all with with those with those e with those equalizers. So let's take a quick look at FabFilter Pro Q2. So we're gonna keep the audio playing. I'm gonna hit solo, and you can see that we can grab the spectrum here, right? And we can see that this looks like it's either a C sharp or a C. Same information we got from. Voxango span. All right, so here's FabFilter Pro Q3. Now, if we if we play the kick and hover over the spectrum to initiate the spectrum grab, all right, so that was a C as well, but it was a little bit out of tune. So I'm pretty confident this is either a C or a C sharp. It's somewhere in there. All right, so now we figured out what the pitch is. It's time to transpose it. Sounds simple enough, but you need to be aware of the different flex modes. Logic defaults to the slicing algorithm. Now the slicing algorithm is great for if you have a loop and you wanna chop it up and you wanna move pit pieces around, that's the one to use, but it's not always great for more tonal sounding kick drums and 808s and snares that have a lot of tonality and a long tail. So. So let's take a look at how the different flex modes affect the quality and the timbre of the sample. All right, so to transpose the pitch, we go up to our region inspector. And if that's not there for you, click this little drop down arrow to, to uncollapse this box if it is collapsed. Now here is the window where it says transpose. So by default, you might think that you can only transpose by clicking this, this drop down arrow up 12 semitones by you know 24 semitones are down negative 12 so whole octaves you can actually click in here and drag now as i do that i want you guys to take a look over at this section of the track right here when i do select transpose and i actually move it up i'm just going to move it up one semitone just to demonstrate this you'll see that this button will turn on here and as i do that you see that it does turn on and our audio color is a little bit darker to let you know that it's activated the flex mode so this is the flex mode now if you can't see that for some reason just go up here and click on the flex icon where it says show and hide flex or you can hit command and f now what i mentioned previously was that logic defaults to one of the multiple flex modes these are the algorithms for how logic's handling and looking at the audio now by default it goes to flex time automatic which is slicing which is the same as this one down here so there are different modes for how you chop up and pitch pitch shift audio. So slicing is a great one if you have a drum loop and you want to change the starting point of some of the sections within that loop. Slicing is great. Now, slicing isn't the best option for a kick. And so what I mean by that is if we solo this kick and I pitch this up eight semitones. Do you hear that little kind of jump, that little glitch at the tail during the tail of the sample? 
It's like going doom. So that's because the the flex time algorithm that logic defaulted to is not is no good for this. Now, like I've mentioned in the video multiple times, you want to try to avoid pitching something like a kick up eight semitones. I'm just showing you an extreme example so you can hear kind of what it does in a negative sense. So let's change this though to one of the other modes. Let's do monophonic. Well, see that's starting to sound more like that kick sample. Let's go to rhythmic. So this one's actually pretty good, but it also does something weird with the tail end of the sample a lot. So what you can do to avoid that is fade. Right, that's pretty tight sounding. The transient is nice. It just adds that weird little, almost it almost sounds like it's starting to reverse at the end of the sample. So I'm gonna go and transpose this down negative two, and let's change this to slicing, which is the default mode, and take a quick listen. All right, let's change it now to monophonic. And let's change it to rhythmic. Right, you can hear that there's not a lot of difference when we're working with such a small transposition amount, negative two, plus two, you know, negative one, that sort of stuff. So these both, both are all three modes sound pretty good. I'm gonna go with monophonic. Quick listen in the mix. All right, so let's take a quick look at the snare and finish up this video. So the same process, I'm gonna just load up Span or FabFilter Pro Q2 or three, and then check out the audio. So let's solo our snare. All right, and hit hold on the spectrum. So we have kind of a subharmonic sub down here. This appears to be the main part of the sound. So we can see this is a G, G4. Now, this snare doesn't sound bad in the mix. It sounds fine. And this is a perfect example of what I've referenced earlier in the video where it helps to know your scale when you're thinking about the key or song. So if we start to think about the notes that are in the scale of B minor, we want to make sure that this is one of those, right? So in B minor, we have B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, and A, right? So this actually is a part of the scale. Now that's why it, it, it fits. That's why it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't like jump out at you or it doesn't get tucked in. It's not dissonant or weird. So don't be afraid to use a snare that isn't on the tonic of the key, right? So like I said, this is at a G. So we could transpose this up one, two, three, four semitones, which we'll do now to put it at a B. So let's transpose this up one, two, three, four. And we're going to go to, let's just go, go to rhythmic. Right, and that's not going to you know move the needle in a negative direction. It is still going to be in tune with our track, right? But in this example, I actually like it more at its original pitch, which is which is a G, because it jumps out at your you know it jumps out a bit more. It'll jump out more at the listener, and it means I don't have to ha to have it as loud. I'm not going to have to mess around with the compression that sort of stuff as much because it's going to sit on top of you know the tonic, which is the most dominant tone in a key. So. If you guys have any questions or comments, post those. We'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Smash that notification bell so when we release a new video, you get an update. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.